The Checkpoints is presented by pharmaceutical company GM Pharma. On Wednesday, at the foreign exchange auction held by National Bank of Georgia, around 65 million was sold out of the 70 million US dollars. The weighted average rate was set at 2.71 Georgian Lari per US dollar. This was the fifth FX auction with outnumbered the intervention held on October 8th, amounting to 48.5 million US dollars. This means only this month. The National Bank of Georgia sold 113.4 million US dollars worth reserves. Global Finance Magazine has released the names of central bank governors who earned the highest and lowest grades in the Central Banker Report Cards 2024. According to the publication MBG, acting president Natia Turnava earned the lowest grade D. According to the publication, Natia Turnava is formally appointed governor and the MBG has been dragged into Georgia's increasingly bitter political divisions. In September 2024, the volume of money transfers from abroad constituted US dollars around 283 million US dollars, which was 1.1% less than in September 2023, according to the statistics published by the National Bank of Georgia. The main reason of decrease is money transfers from Russia in line with the fading of migration effects. External merchandise trade of Georgia amounted to 16 billion US dollar in January, September 2024, which is 3.7% higher year on year. The value of export increased by 4.1% reaching 4 billion US dollars while the import increased by 3.6% and amounted 11 billion US dollars. In September, exports grew by 17% up to 616 million US dollars. Prime Minister Iraq Kobahidze has announced the intention of demerging sports and culture into two ministries. Tinatin Ruhadze has been appointed the Georgian Minister of Culture, Sports and Youth Affairs. Prime Minister Irakli Kobahidze introduced the new minister during a briefing at the government administration before this appointment. Tinatin Ruhadze served as director of the National Palace of Youth. The ministerial position became vacant after Thea Tsulukiani was added to the ruling Georgian Dreams electoral list. The PM also named Shalva Gogoladze as the first deputy minister of the same ministry to become a sports minister after the demerging takes place. The project for Tbilisi Dry Port, an initiative involving construction of a multimodal inland terminal to serve rail and road container shipments is set to start functioning by the end of the year in the Georgian capital with the investments from the United Arab Emirates Abu Dhabi Ports Group, the Ministry of Economy said on Wednesday. According to Jamal Ineshwili, chair of the supervisory board of the port, the first phase will open in January, and the investment for the first stage is around 16 million US dollars. This is The Checkpoints. I'm Elena Gwanjilashvili, author and the host of the show, and The Checkpoints team is ready to sum up business and economics week for you. PMC Research published a report macro overview according to the document in the first two quarters of 2024, the Georgian economy grew by 9.1%, exceeding the 8% growth recorded during the same period in 2023. From January to August 2024, the average real GDP growth was 9.6%, with the highest growth rates observed in July and August at 13 and 12% respectively. 
In the July, the National Bank of Georgia revised its annual GDP growth forecast for 2024, raising it from 5.6% to 6.8%. Strong domestic demand and low inflation are key factors behind the higher than expected growth rate. Education and accommodation and food service activities were the fastest growing sectors in the first six months of 2024, achieving year-on-year -year growth rates of 25% and 23% respectively. The energy sector saw a 9% decline compared to the same period in the previous year. This drop can be attributed to reduced domestic production from thermal power plants whose output decreased by 26.3% in the first six months of 2024. Education and transportation and storage were the key contributors to growth in the first six months of 2024 with contributions of 14.6% and 13.3% respectively. By the end of August 2024, the budget deficit had reached 539 million lari. Historical trends suggest that the majority of the deficit typically accumulates in the second half of the year, indicating a likely further increase. According to the Ministry of Finance of Georgia, the deficit is projected to reach 2.2 billion lari by the end of 2024, which is 2.6% of projected nominal GDP. As of the end of August 2024, government debt had increased by 3.4 percent compared to the end of 2023. The Ministry of Finance of Georgia projects that by year-end, government debt will rise further to 33.7 billion lari, representing 38.4 percent of the forecasted nominal GDP. In the third quarter of 2024, Georgian businesses assessed the business climate to be slightly less favorable than that of um, third quarter of 2023, that is, minus four points. During this period, both the present business situation and also business expectations deteriorated. In 2024, Georgia's business climate experienced a notable decline in the second quarter, driven by political instability and widespread civil protests against the Bill on Transparency of Foreign Influence. While business expectations improved in the third quarter, they remained below the pre-pandemic level, in contrast to optimistic expectations that businesses had in the beginning of 2024. Despite a noticeable recovery compared to the second quarter, the Georgian economic climate in the third quarter of 2024 did not return to the first quarter levels. Specifically, the Georgian Economic Climate Index in the, second, in the third quarter of 2024 decreased by 32 points compared to the first quarter. Furthermore, during the same period, the assessment of the present economic situation and future expectations declined by 21 and 47 points, respectively. The sharp decline in expectations in the second quarter of 2024 reflects the pessimistic outlook of Georgian economists driven by political instability and concerns over the anticipated negative impact of the bill on transparency of foreign influence on the economy, the so-called Russian law. Headline inflation remained below the target level during the first nine months of 2024 at 1.1%. Core inflation followed a decreasing trend after 2023, reaching an average of 1.7% for the first three quarters of 2024. The low level of inflation resulted from a strict monetary policy combined with minimal external shocks. However, rising domestic demand and the impact of imported inflation, primarily driven by higher energy prices, are putting upward pressure on inflation. Monthly year-over-year -year inflation remained below the target level throughout the year. An upward trajectory was observed in the second quarter, culminating in a peak of 2.2% in June, after which inflation steadily declined, reaching 0.6% in September. The primary factor exerting downward pressure on inflation, according to PMZ, in the first quarter was the decline in prices for food and non-alcoholic beverages. However, this base effect dissipated in May and inflation returned to positive territory. Deflation in the housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuel sector was driven by a one-time reduction in electricity tariffs. This effect will persist until the end of the year and will phase out in January 2025. The largest contribution to inflation in the 
first nine months of 2024 came from the transportation and communication industry. From the beginning of 2024, the National Bank of Georgia began accumulating reserves, however, due to exchange rate fluctuations caused by domestic instability. At the end of the first quarter, the NBG had to sell some reserves to stabilize the currency. Due to the appreciation of the US dollar, since the beginning of October, the National Bank of Georgia had to intervene through open market operations, which resulted in a further reduction of foreign reserves. Due to improved macroeconomic conditions, including low inflation and minimal external shocks in May 2024, the NBG lowered the monetary policy rate to 8%. To manage the impact of increasing domestic demand and rising imported inflation, the monetary policy rate is expected to remain at 8% until the end of the year, with no further reductions anticipated. In six months, months of 2024, interest rates on loans denominated in LARI decreased slightly to 14.6% following the decreased monetary policy rate, while interest rates on FX loan remained stable. Due to monetary easing and overall positive economic indicators, significant expansion in private sector credit has occurred. In the first eight months of 2024, the average growth rate of private sector credit reached 18%. A high share of foreign currency denominated loans and deposits is a common phenomenon in developing countries. However, under such circumstances, according to PMC, exchange rate fluctuations create risks for financial stability. In an effort to reduce the share of foreign currency denominated loans and deposits, the government of Georgia has actively implemented de-dollarization policies since 2017. Financial dollarization has significantly decreased in recent years. As of August 2024, the dollarization of loans and deposits reached 43.9% and 47.8% respectively. Importantly, the gap between these parameters is low, minimizing currency mismatch risks and overall threats for financial stability. Financial dollarization is on the decline, however, the optimal level for the economy has yet to be determined or established by the relevant authorities, PMC believes. The business returned excess VAT of 1.8 billion lari in nine months of 2024, according to the Ministry of Finance of Georgia. As of the share of VAT that remained in the budget, the Treasury of the Ministry of Finance will announce their volume on October 20. In the eight months of 2024, the amount mobilized in the form of VAT in the state budget amounted to 4.9 billion lari, which was 91% of the nine-month plan. According to the Revenue Service, 2.3 billion lari was returned to the business in the form of excess VAT in 2023. In 2022, it was 2.3 billion lari, and in 2021, it was around 2 billion lari. According to the ministry, last year, the excess VAT was returned to 48 thousand and a half enterprises. The overpaid amount derived by VAT declaring might be automatically refunded to the taxpayer from November 17, 2020. More on this week's business news and outlook from Natia Taktakishvili. Porsche Center Tbilisi represented the new Porsche mark and the new electric car has completely different capabilities and elegant style. The new mark has up to 639 horsepower. The car can cover over 613 kilometers with a single charge. The vehicle can be charged within 21 minutes. Within its exceptional electric performance, the car is also convenient on off-roads. Porsche Center Tbilisi is considered as the hub for the region. More and more customers choose electric cars. We also continue to promote eco-friendly transport and along with the choice, we are intensively expanding the corresponding infrastructure, said Petra Takadze, the chief officer of Porsche Center Tbilisi. According to the company, the Porsche Macan went on sale worldwide at the same time, including in Georgia. Supporters of the event via TBC Insurance, TBC Leasing, TBC Concept, Altagi Personal Insurance, Primo and Castronum. Porsche Center Tbilisi, included in Tegata Holding, has been operating on the Georgian market since 2011. The company offers customers the latest premium brand cars as well as full diagnostic and repair services, regional parts and accessories. 
Custom Group will open five additional branches between 2025 and 2026, of which one will be a hypermarket. The founder of Custom Group, Georgi Tanadze, spoke about this with TV program Business Morning. Between 2025 and 2026, we plan to add five additional branches to Custom Group, four of which will be medium sized stores located on 300 square meters, while the other one will be a hypermarket placed on a space of 1,500 square meters. We are doing this together with company Biograph on Vajrapshavela Avenue. After the completion of the project, we will already have a hypermarket where customers can buy vegetables, fresh meat, and etc., said Tenadze. The first branch of Gastronom opened in 2019, and since then, the company is developing step-by-step. Step. Currently, Gastronom Group has six branches and four restaurants, and their portfolio includes more than 2,500 denominations of top quality products in various categories such as premium cheese, seafood, wine, organic and vegan products, as well as concept store at Vajrapshavela Avenue, kitchen and living. LCY Kiki, one of the largest clothes retailers in Georgia, has published its financial report for 2023. According to the company's report, sales increased by a record 10 million lari during the mentioned year, as a result of which the company's sales reached 154 million lari in Georgia. LCY Kiki, which is the largest Turkish retailer, is represent in the Georgian market with 15 stores. According to the financial report company LCY Waikiki operates on the Armenian market along with Georgia and sales on those markets increased by 4 million lari, reaching 61.5 million lari. Accordingly, the total sales of the company in these three countries amounted to 260 million lari. The profit of Waikiki directly from Georgian market amounted to 9.3 million lari. As of the report, LC Waikiki considers Inditex brand Zara, Bershka, Pull&Bear as its main competitors in Georgia. The mentioned brands have not yet published their 2023 revenues from the Georgian market. Is the name of a facility that came up with a new concept of creating a Georgian fast food company. The decision was successful, and today the company unites two branches in Tbilisi. One is located in Waka district, Abashida Street, while the other in Saburtalo district. Tashkent Street. The main products of the menu is Kahori Classic and Chicken Barbecue. The founder of Setskli Ainto talks about the future plans of the facility with TV program Business Morning. As Michael Chapurishvili notes, within the next year, the company is going to open an enterprise that will supply the branches. Our first goal is to fully utilize Tbilisi. After that, we want to open an enterprise equipped with modern standards and from that plant, our branches will be supplied. I think that next year we will already have an enterprise as full expansion in the region we will do it after we open a new restaurant in different districts of Tbilisi, says the founder of Tetzkliainto. Mikhail Chapurishvili also talks about the results of new Waki branch, which has been operating for just a month. The Waki branch has opened on September 15. The restaurant succeeded in about one month and reached the rate of Sabutel branch. The establishment of Waki branch allowed us to serve more people and we also expanded the delivery service area, he notes. Winery Chaduna, a family business located in Quareli, which exports wine to China, expects an increase in demand from this market. The founder of the winery, Georgi Shukashuli, told BMDG that the Demand for query wine is growing in China. The company has a local partner who sells wine in wine shop or Chaduna winery. In this direction, 3,000 bottles of wine have already been exported and received a positive evaluation from them. The demand from query wine on the Chinese market is very high. We exported about 3,000 bottles of wine to China. The price ranges from 15 to 18 lari. We have a very close connection with China and we assume that the demand will increase, says the winemaker. According to Georgi Shukashvili, they have not yet negotiated with the new export markets. However, according to the winemaker, they plan to actively participate in festivals in order to find new countries. Construction of Chaduna winery started two years ago at the initial stage up 
to 100,000 lari was invested in the winery and later the winery received a 30,000 lari grant from the agency Enterprise Georgia, which provided the necessary devices for the enterprise. The company produces up to 10,000 bottles of wine per year, but plans to increase production by about 30% next year. Kula, one of the largest local producers of fruit juice in Georgia, is expanding its export geography and plans to enter several markets this year. In the conditions of the increased export figures of fruit juices in the country, Ivan Guglidze, the director of the company, spoke about the export figures of Kula with BMG TV. We have already found new markets this year. We will send our products to Korea. We have entered Qatar and negotiations are underway with Saudi Arabia. We have added Macedonia and Albania. These are relatively small markets, but expansion in the direction of Europe is very important. Ivan Igoglidze notes, according to him, last year 65 percent of Kulos products we exported abroad. We try to focus on exports as much as possible, says the director of the company, noting that today the company sells products under the Made in Georgia label in more than 20 countries. The businessman believes that the current year will be successful for the fruit juice industry in terms of exports. Kula is starting to receive apples and we are now going to process 30,000 tons of apples from which we will get 25,000 tons of juice. The current year's export growth trend is in line with the company's plans as pre-orders have already been received, says the director of Kula. Yurgi Toli, the manager of Glarus Old Town Hotel declares that the number of tourists in the hotel increased by 10 percent this year. As Tolidze said accommodation in the hotel became more expensive by 10 percent due to the increase in demand. Glarus Old Town currently has an occupancy rate of 75 percent with the majority of visitors coming from Saudi Arabia and Emirates and Israel. If we compare six months of the current year with last year, we didn't have an average season last year. We moved from low to high income season. This year we have got the increased tourist benchmark boost, occupancy and price have increased by 10 percent, says Georgi Dolice. As for the geography of the country's Georgi Dolidze says last year's trend is maintained and gas mainly come from Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, Israel, neighboring countries and part from Europe. We have a 7 percent increase in European tourists. Tourists from Germany, Poland and Italy have increased. Group tours from Europe are on the way to recovery. As for the price classification, they are those who stay in hotels for 10 USD per night. The night of an apartment ranges from 60 USD to 70 USD. The price of four and five star hotels is above 100 USD. Set Tolice in a prime location in the center of Tbilisi, Glarus Old Town provides air conditioned rooms, a restaurant, free Wi Fi, and a bar. This five star hotel offers room service and 24 hour front desk. Rose liqueur under the name Semele will be sold on the market from November. The company's co-founder Salome Uzunashvili spoke about this with BMDG. Semele appeared on the market last year and until now it offers customers various types of liquors, namely Saperavi, Blackberry, as well as cherry liquors, which are sold in a half-liter bottle. Samela will also offer rose liquor to the customers from November. Like other varieties at the initial stage, rose liquor will be represented in small quantities on the market. At the first stage, we produce 200 bottles of rose liquor. Now we make over 300 bottles of other varieties. We are trying to enter chain markets. Basically, we are represented only in specialized wine shops and we want to develop sales in chain stores as well. The cost of new type of liqueur like other liqueurs will be within 50 lari, Uzunashvili says. Samela is a liqueur production company that has been operating on the market since 2023.
In Georgia, growth is projected at 7.5% for 2024, well above the potential level driven by household consumption, investment and government spending, says the World Bank's economic update for the region released on Thursday. According to the report, re-exports to Central Asia, mainly used cars, have surged over the past year, while the trade deficit is expected to remain in double digits. In the medium term, growth is expected to moderate to 5%, returning to its potential rate Key downside risks include uncertainties surrounding the post-election landscape and Georgia's commitment to making decisive progress on EU accession, reads the report. Economic growth in the developing economies of the Europe and Central Asia region is stabilizing after a series of crises, but at levels well below the early 2000s, says the World Bank's economic update for the region released um, today. Regional growth is expected to moderate to 3.3% this year from 3.5% in 2023, slowing further to 0.6% uh, in 2025. This is significantly weaker than the 5.1% average growth of um, 2000, 2009 and below what is needed for the region's middle-income countries to achieve their aspiration of attaining high-income status within a generation or two. Lower inflation is prompting some central banks to start cutting policy rates this year. Policy caution prevails, however, and concerns about persistent price pressure, the World Bank says. The report calls for a major overhaul of education systems across the region, particularly higher education to unlock the human talent needed to reinvigorate economic growth and boost convergence with high-income countries. Countries of the Europe and Central Asia region have ably navigated the recent shocks of high inflation, the fallout from Russia's invasion of Ukraine and weak expansion in the European Union. The region's key export market said Antonella Bassani, World Bank Vice President for Europe and Central Asia, to achieve stronger productivity growth over the longer term, it will be important for the countries uh, of the region to substantially improve the quality of both secondary and higher education, key from bolstering human capital and creativity, she added. Currently, economic growth in the developing economies of Europe and Central Asia is underpinned by private consumption because of rising wages, government transfers to household and falling inflation. Remittance inflows are also above pre-pandemic levels and they continue to support economic expansion in the Western Balkans, the South Caucasus and Central Asia. Tourism is another bright spot in the region's growth story with international tourist arrivals surpassing pre-pandemic levels. Turkey saw almost 30% uh, more tourist arrivals during the first half of this year compared to the same period in um, 2018 and 2019. Recovering goods exports, however, has faded due to the slowdown in the European Union. According to the World Bank in Ukraine, substantial damage from Russia's invasion and extensive electricity disruptions are likely to slow growth from 5.3% last year to 3.2% this year and 2% in 2025. In Russia, uh, World Bank believes for tighter monetary policy and increasingly binding constraints on production capacity and labor so resources are expected to slow growth from 3.6% in 2023 to 3.2% this year and 1.6% in 2025. Growth in Turkey, the region's second largest economy after Russia is set to slow to 3.2% this year from 5.1% uh, in 2023 because of the ongoing rebalancing of the economy from consumption-led expansion and the normalization of monetary and fiscal policies. Investment growth also slowed sharply because of the uh, cuts uh, to public investment, high borrowing costs and the further cooling of construction activity, the report reads. In a special analysis of talent and its critical role as a driver of economic growth, the report finds that education quality has been deteriorating at a critical time when many countries in the region already face substantial demographic and human capital challenges. The population is aging rapidly in many countries and labor force participation remains low in some parts of the region, especially for women, according to the World Bank. The greatest scope for boosting long-term growth in the region lies in the raising the quality of education, especially 
slightly higher education, said um, Ivailo Izborski, World Bank Chief Economist for Europe and Central Asia, prioritizing quality of education and supporting lifelong learning will help countries bolster their human capital, reduce talent misallocation and waste, energize innovation and drive sustainable economic growth and development, he added. The report notes that across the region, enrollment rates at all levels of education are high. The problem lies with the quality of education, which has deteriorated in recent years. Test scores on the uh, Program for International Student Assessment, PISA, which is uh, um, administered to 15-year-old uh, students, have declined substantially over the last decade. Gaps in the quality of basic, primary, and secondary education are particularly large for students from disadvantaged backgrounds. Higher education is underperforming, according to World Bank, even more than basic education. Countries in other regions with a similar quality of basic education or similar income level have better universities. For example, there are only nine institutions from the region in the top 500 times higher um, education ranking of world universities. Weaknesses in higher education systems include outdated curricula, lack of investment in equipment and infrastructure, poor management management and the disconnect between education and labor market needs. Addressing these challenges will require efforts to accelerate curriculum reforms, especially in science, technology, engineering and math STEM subjects, improving the quality of higher education and enlisting more and better trained teachers to boost human capital creation. What was new in the economy this week? Our short overview. External merchandise trade of Georgia mounted to 16.779 million USD in January September 2024, 3.7 percent higher in Orient, according to the preliminary data from the National Statistics Office of Georgia. As of the document, the value of exports increased by 4.1 percent, reaching 4.786 million USD, while the import increased by 3.6 percent amounting to 11.992 million USD. The trade deficit equaled 7.205 million USD and its share in trade turnover constituted 42.9%. The United Airports of Georgia on Tuesday announced flights between the Kutaisi International Airport in the country's west and Abu Dhabi, the capital of United Arab Emirates, would increase starting from November with 10 weekly services scheduled during the winter season. Director Yaki Karkashate hosted Ahmed Al Niwaimi, the ambassador of United Arab Emirates to Georgia, at the airport for a tour of the terminal and navigation tower and briefed the diplomat on facilities operation. The parties also discussed the planned increase in flight frequencies with Al Niwaimi expressing satisfaction that the airport now provided a direct air link to the United Arab Emirates capital, highlighting the route as most popular among passengers. We are pleased that with their Abu Dhabi which flies daily from Abu Dhabi to Kutaisi will soon almost double its flights. This is very good news and on certain days the airline will make two flights a day, the ambassador said. In his comments, Karkachaze emphasized the increased flight frequency, noting the Middle East and the United Arab Emirates represented key tourist markets for the country and stressed the importance of continuing to promote the route. In September 2024, the volume of money transfers from abroad constituted 283.4 million USD, which was 1.1 percent or 3 million USD less than in September 2023, according to the statistics published by the National Bank of Georgia. 95.8 percent of total money transfers from abroad came from 23 largest countries, with the volume of transfers from these countries each exceeding 1 million USD in September 2024. In September 2023, the share of these 23 countries constituted 95.3 percent of total volume of money transfers. Countries by remittances in September 2023, Italy, 50 million USD, United States of America, 49 million USD, Russian Federation, 36 million USD, Germany, 26 million USD, Greece, 25 million USD, Israel, 21 million USD. 
Kyrgyzstan 9.2 million USD, Turkey 9 million USD, Kazakhstan 8.1 million USD, Ireland 5.9 million USD. I said published Khajapuri index according to the report in September 2024, the average price for preparing a standard portion of Emeritian Khajapuri reached 6.48 lari during August and September 2024. Khajapuri index showed an upward trend with price increasing by 13% in September compared to July 2024. This rise is primarily due to a 22% increase in cheese prices over the three months period. Typical as autumn approaches, dairy products price rise due to the need for additional animal feed supplements. In addition to the seasonal factors, the average price of Hajapuri in September 2024 is 10.3% higher than in September 2023. A close look at price change show yearly increase across all Hajapurian ingredients, yeast, milk, butter, cheese, flour and eggs. Tbilisi currently ranks as the most expensive market for Khachapuri ingredients with the cost of making one standard Nimeritian Khachapuri at 7.4 lari, 8.5% higher than the national average. In contrast, Batumi remains the most affordable location with a single Khachapuri costing 6.18 lari, the 0.86 lari price difference between Tbilisi and Batumi can be attributed to seasonal tourist patterns. Company Telezi has published the operational figures for nine months 2024. In 2024, company Telezi distributed 2 billion kilowatt hour of electricity, which was 6.7% more than the amount of electricity distributed in the same period of 2023. The mentioned growth was due to the increase in economic activity and the number of new subscribers in the country. As of September 2024, the number of Telasi subscribers increased by 3.7% compared to the same period of 2023, amounting to 772,000 subscribers of which 691,000 was private individuals and 80.7 thousand legal entities. According to the data of nine months 2024, the total length of companies' power transmission lines amounted to 7,000 km, which was 2.9 percent higher than the indicator of the nine months of 2023. The total length of companies' power transmission lines increased as a result of network development, reconstruction and modernization works. The cableway connecting Rustavili Avenue to Mtatsminda Park has officially opened. According to Tbilisi City Hall, the round trip gondola style cableway features two stations and five masts and has been fully reconstructed. It transports passengers at a speed of 5 meters per second using 21 cable cars with a travel time of approximately 4 minutes. The Dagi company constructed the cableway while the international Doppler-Meyer group oversaw the engineering work. The reconstruction cableway will be managed by Tatsminda Park Administration with a project value of 50 million lari. The seasonal flu immunization campaign launched on Friday across Georgia. The health ministry reported that Georgian government acquired a four-component anti-flu vaccine from Abbott Biological, recommended by the World Health Organization. The priority will be given to high-risk groups, including patients with hepatitis C, diabetes, or chronic illness, followed by elderly teachers, medical personnel, pregnant women and children. Immunization will be available to all starting November 4 and be free of charge. The country has absolutely healthy macroeconomic indicators, including external debt, budget deficit, inflation, economic growth, and others stated by the first vice prime minister and minister of economy and sustainable development, Levan Davidashvili. I'll tell you very simply, we've had very stable economic progress and development recently. Davidashvili said we can discuss this with any expert. We have significant economic growth, and at the same time, we have very low inflation. This is the biggest achievement, and only a few countries 
countries can talk about such results, David Ashwili added. We have all other macroeconomic indicators absolutely healthy, meaning the country's macroeconomic parameters are very stable and sound. This applies to the country's external debt, budget deficit, inflation, economic growth, and so on. In this process, along with the government's economic team, the National Bank plays a significant role. I think this is an objective indicator, including the work of the National Bank's leadership, Levan David Hashvili stated. Ekaterina Mikabadze, the vice governor of the National Bank, declares that foreign exchange intervention by the central bank was a one-time large transaction which was carried out to avoid pressure and to neutralize the formation of wrong expectations. As Mikabadze mentioned in an interview with BMDG, as a rule, the National Bank sells currency in order to avoid excessive fluctuations. This is a one-time large transaction to mitigate excessive volatility due to non-fundamental factors. We usually sell currency to avoid excessive volatility. No central bank and no reserve will be able to combat the devaluation caused by fundamental factors. Therefore, we only neutralize the short-term effects to a certain extent, said Ekaterina Mikabadze. On Wednesday, at the foreign exchange auction held by the National Bank of Georgia, sold 64.9 million USD out of the 70 million. The weighted average exchange rate was set at um, 2.71 uh, lari per US dollar. Large one-time transactions continue to influence uh, the foreign exchange market, impacting the lari's exchange rate. To prevent excessive fluctuations, the National Bank of Georgia opted to hold um, the auction it's important to emphasize once again that these recent fluctuations in the foreign exchange market are not linked to macroeconomic factors and are therefore expected to be short term said NBG. The country's macroeconomic fundamentals remain strong. Over the past three years, Georgia has experienced solid economic growth, and since 2023, inflation has remained below the target rate of 3%. Preliminary data for September shows a 17% rise in exports and a 4.1% decrease in imports. Additionally, strong foreign currency inflows are helping to sustain the current account deficit at manageable levels, according to NBG. BG. Global Finance Magazine has released the names of central bank governors who earned the highest and lowest grades in the Central Banker Report Cards 2024. According to the publication, NBG acting president Natia Turnava earned the lowest grade D. Grades are based um, on an A plus to D scale for success in areas such as inflation control, economic growth goals, currency stability, and interest rate management. The managers of those central bankers who have been in the position for a short time, less than one year, are evaluated with a TT score, which means that uh, not enough time has yet passed for the evaluation. Natia Turnava had this assessment in Global Finances 2023 report, which was published on September 24 of last year, because for the mentioned period, Turnava had only started working as the acting president of NBG in 2022. Global Finance assessed the activity of Natia Turnava's predecessor, Kobagvenit uh, Adze, with an A uh, minus grade. Gwenit Adze was um, also had an A, a uh, grade in 2021 and 2020, in 2019, in 2018. The governor of the Central Bank of Georgia has been participating in global finances rating since 2018. According to the publication, Natia Turnava is formally appointed governor and the NBG has been dragged into Georgia's increasingly bitter political um, divisions. Um, acting head of the National Bank of Georgia, NBG, since June uh, 2023, amid controversy over what was regarded as a highly political appointment, Natia Turnava has yet to be formally appointed governor, but that has been the least of her problems as she and the NBG have been dragged into Georgia's increasingly bitter political divisions. Questions were raised over her judgment in September 2023 when she failed 
moved to enforce international sanctions on Georgia's former Prosecutor General Otar Partskhaladze, who has close connections to Russian President Vladimir Putin, claiming that the freezing of a Georgian individual's assets could be enforced domestically only by a Georgian court. Her controversial um, stand led to three um, top-level resignations from the NBG and a rebuke from Georgian President Salome Zurabishvili, who called on her to resign. Mm, Turnava has also been obliged to spend foreign currency to prop up the very last May, despite fierce opposition from all other political parties, the president and the EU, which subsequently suspended membership negotiations with Georgia. This was at the height of mm, anti-government demonstrations against the country's so-called foreign agents law. According to Fitch ratings, international reserves dropped from a peak of 5.4 billion Larry in August 2023 to 4.6 billion in June of this year. That decline beginning soon after the start of Tunava's tenure. She has done nothing to dispel concerns about her conduct last September and her closeness to the governing Georgian Dream Party has undermined confidence. In June, Fitch ratings warned that perceived risks to the independence of the NBG could erode policy credibility, potentially weakening the capacity of Georgia's small, open and dollarized economy to respond to external shocks. Mm. Uh, this is the conclusion. As regards the monetary policy, the NBG has followed a broadly tight strategy with rates cut to 8% in May against inflation of 2% at that time, although high levels of dollarization impact policy transmission. Inflation peaked at 2.2% in June, then subsided to 1% by August. The publication writes. The central banker report cards um, 2024 by New York-based global finance magazine, a comprehensive assessment of the performance of central banks worldwide, highlights the complex challenges faced by these institutions over the past year. The central banker report cards published um, annually by global finance since 1994 grade the central bank governors of nearly 100 key countries, territories and districts, as well as the European Union, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, the Bank of Central Africa, states and the Central Bank of West African states. Last week, a global on-demand delivery platform, Glovo, that allows users to order a variety of products and have them delivered quickly to their location, is undergoing the most significant transformation since 2016, setting a new standard for excellence and customer experience. Tech Inform host Georgi Aronia visited Yellow Park, where Glovo's global headquarters is located, and tested the new features. During his visit, Georgi interviewed Glovo's chief technology officer, Shiro Teuri, about Glovo Next. Let's Let's watch the interview to see what the future looks like for Glovo. Sure, hi. Thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure for me to be here at the Yellow Park, where the Glovo's global headquarters are. And the reason for me and some other guys being here is Glovo Next, basically the event at which you shared the future for Glovo. I understand that you guys don't like to call the new version of Glovo the social media of uh, food delivery, but you do have some new, um, new very interesting functionalities that do resemble some of those that people know from social media. So can you please uh, walk me through the process? What did you change and why did you change it? What was the motivation behind it? Well, thank you so much for having me, and it's an honor to have you all at Yellow Park today. So uh, today, we are officially launching three very transformational features um, on the Glovo app um, that we're calling Video, Social, and Pix, right? Um, and the whole idea is to try and transform or enrich the um, experience that customers have on our app um, and allow them to have additional layers of interactions with each other, but also with the restaurants that they've come to know and love. Um, so the first feature that we're releasing is video. Um, so basically think of a TikTok experience, but on the global app. Um, even though we um, are vehement in the idea that we're not a social media company, um, but we are borrowing some of these experiences that um, consumers have come to know and love on other platforms and embedding them into the, the global experience. Uh, so now we'll have uh, restaurants who are already creating uh, this content in some way, shape or form and sharing them on their social media platforms, but we are giving them um, assets and space on our platform for them to embed these, uh, th these videos there. Um, and we're giving customers direct access to this content and allowing them to actually purchase directly from uh, as they view the feed uh, on the app. 
Um, the second uh, feature that we're launching is PIX. Uh, so we've heard a lot from our customers talking about um, the ability or lack thereof of uh, being able to curate their uh, selection on the app. Uh, so for example, if I want to have uh, a selection of healthy meals or healthy restaurants, um, it's, it was difficult before uh, for me to actually have a, a place where I could go to and just see all the healthy restaurants or healthy, the healthy selections that I have. Uh, so with Pix, we're changing that. You're basically able to create, think of it like a, a playlist of some sorts um, on, the, on the global app. Uh, and the final thing that we are launching today is a, a feature called Social. And essentially what this means is you are able to have connections with people uh, around you, so your friends. Uh, and this is essentially the, the circle of people who are um, pulled out of your phone book. So friends that you have, um, hopefully on the global app, but also within your phone book are able to receive signals from you around things that you like or preferences that you have. And this kind of brings everything together neatly into creating a more communal experience uh, to global. So this is what the launch is all about. I understand the motivation behind uh, including social media features in the app because basically TikTok, Instagram Reels, all of that is very, very important in today's world. But can you please explain what is the business rationale behind the decision? What is that you're trying to achieve with the new features? Is it customer retention, new customer acquisition, or what it is? We have always had it in the back of our minds as Glovo to create transformational experience, experiences for our customers. And we had to be very intentional about this because um, for the longest time, like any other tech company, you would stick to the, the, the core um, experience that you're building for your, for your users. But now we're trying to be a lot more bold and ambitious and venturing into new areas um, through what we call bets. Um, and you could think of that as innovation projects. Um, and so as a company, we've had to be very intentional about reserving capacity and resources to venture into these areas that could take off or could fail, right? So in terms of motivation, this is more of us venturing into a bold new area to try and give customers an experience that they ordinarily would not have thought of getting from a mainstream food delivery platform, um, and then get signals from them about you know, the, what they think about it or how they interact with it, and use it to continue iterating either you know, on the same path or try something completely different. So call it innovation. This is us taking a bold new step towards really thinking outside the box in terms of what a mainstream food delivery experience should look like or on demand or multi-category delivery experience should look like. Sure. During the presentation, you mentioned uh, and you explained how tech team of Glow went through the changes through which uh, now we have the new social media features within the app. But you also mentioned that um, the time frame for the changes, uh, for the implementation of changes was quite small. My first question is, why was it so small, uh, so little? And also, could you explain what sort of uh, changes and what sort of mechanics your team went through so that you could have implemented the decisions and changes that we now see? See in the global app. Yeah. So um, the first thing we we did, and we we do this and try and do this on a regular basis, is get creative ideas from our tech team on a on a very regular basis. And we do this through a series of um, hackathons where we put teams together and they come up with amazing new ideas. But what used to happen is that a lot of these ideas, well, most of them obviously would not make it to the mainstream app. Um, and what we launched uh, with, with this uh, Global Next event was actually born out of some of these ideas, right? Um, our typical process involves you know, running focus groups with users, um, pulling a lot of data around um, utilization of the app, and using some of these signals, or a lot of these signals, to come up with uh, what would fall into a product roadmap, and then our teams would go out and you know kind of work on work, work on these uh, on these projects but this was essentially different because you know we had these ideas sourced from the team um, from over a year ago and so we'd been slowly thinking about this and we ran focus groups with some customers and tried to see kind of um, what their reaction would be to having a video experience or a social experience or a pix experience on the app um, and so typically this user research phase of the development project, you could think of it as typically done, 
which then meant that bringing the project to life became uh, a much more kind of time box process. Um, so I'd say it wasn't necessarily too short of a time. It was more like it was kind of years in preparation in the, in the, in the making. And so this made the team kind of focused in realizing or bringing this project to, to life. My assumption is that you talk to a lot of partner organizations, uh, be them restaurants, cafes, shops, etc. Uh, what is the initial reaction of those people when they uh, heard the new functionalities, the new features that you wanted to introduce to the Glow Web? And what do they think now since the time frame expanded a bit? From a customer's perspective and the partners that we've spoken to so far, this is it's a, it's a compelling idea. They love it. And it's important to remember that a lot of our partners were already creating this content to begin with, right? You go on Instagram or TikTok and follow um, any restaurant that you love, um, you will find a lot of the content that we're now bringing into the, the food delivery app experience already in existence. Um, so to us, it's more kind of like a a neat consolidation of uh, things that already exist in different platforms on the platform that actually allows them to transact or interact with, uh, uh, with their customers. So the response has been positive so far. Um, we have rolled this out now to more people and we'll continue collecting signals and iterating as we go. Yeah, whatever you say is also incredibly good for SMEs, which consist of a big part of uh, Glovo's partners and in general for Georgia, they are very important. Um, but uh, let me ask you this. Uh, I understand that the general time frame is not set uh, for sure yet. You've launched in Barcelona, but what is the more or less uh, specific time frame that you can share for the updates to be launched in other global countries such as Georgia, for example? So I can't get into too much detail about the, the rollout process because it also involves us getting signals uh, as we launch city by city. This is our typical uh, process on the tech side, um, but it will be available worldwide uh, in the coming months. Shiro, thank you very much uh, for your time, uh, for your answers. It, it was a pleasure to host an interview here at the Yellow Park. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The Georgian people deserve a government that respects their right to democratically elect uh, their leaders. This was stated in the statement of the U.S. Helsinki Committee. The signatories of the statement are the chairman of the Helsinki Committee, Congressman Joe Wilson, Republican Party, Congressman Steve Cohen, Democratic Party, Richard Hartson, um, Republican Party, Congressman Mark Wise, Democratic Party, and the U.S. Secretary of State for Democracy, Human Rights and Labor Affairs Assistant Daphne. Rand. According to the statement, the authoritarian um, trajectory of the Georgian government endangers the country's democratic future and Euro-Atlantic aspirations. Over the past few um, decades, uh, the people of Georgia have demonstrated their commitment to democracy and the rule of law. The Georgian people deserve a government that respects their right to democratically elect their leaders. The Georgian government must honor its commitment to its uh, country and people by holding free and fair elections monitored by independent election observers and allowing political opposition. As has been the case for years, the government's authoritarian trajectory threatens the democratic future of Georgia and the deep-seated Euro-Atlantic aspirations of its people, the statement said. The statement also notes that um, in September, the U.S. State Department announced a wide range of accountability measures against Georgian government officials and others who have undermined Georgia's democracy democracy and human rights. In May, the leaders of the Helsinki Commission uh, presented the Friendly Act, a bipartisan bill whose purpose is to strengthen democracy, human rights and the rule of law in Georgia, which once again confirms the commitment of the United States to support Georgia's Euro-Atlantic integration and to resist the influence of authoritarian regimes, especially Russia. The bill was bipartisanly approved in the Foreign Relations Committee of the U.S. House of representatives and now awaits approval in the House of Representatives, the statement said. This was our last news for today. We will meet next Sunday, the same uh, time. But you have to follow us on BMW for more news and um, the economy in Georgia, in the region and beyond.
The Checkpoints is presented by pharmaceutical company GM Pharma.